Hey guys, it's Casey, and welcome back for another Unreal tutorial. Today, I'm going to do a kind of a follow-up tutorial for what I did before, where I went into the basics of kind of multiplayer code, just in blueprints at least. How do you do the very basics of multiplayer code? How do you do like a run on server and a multicast? This is a follow-up to that, and it's going to be how do we spawn objects in multiplayer? And there's some pitfalls that you have to avoid. It's You write it fairly straightforward. Um, with normal multiplayer code, but there's going to be some hiccups, and that's what I want to go over with this project really quickly. So what I'm going to do is this is just a normal first person project, and I have not touched a single thing. The first thing I'm going to do is just I'm going to make an actor out of this cube, or I'm going to make a blueprint at least out of this cube. So I'm going to select the cube, make a blueprint, and I'm just going to call this cube actor, just so that that's what we're essentially going to spawn and I'm just going to delete that out of the level now. And now I'm going to open up my player, and I just want to make it so that on click that I spawn that cube somewhere. So let's do a line trace. Um, let's do by channel, that works. Let's go off of our camera. And essentially what I want to show is just what, what are potentially issues that you would run into here. Because when I first started doing multiplayer, I ran into some issues where I was not sure what was going on, and it took essentially like a day of debugging to figure out, I'm like, oh, th that kind of interaction exists in multiplayer. So that's just what I'm going to show real quick. So off of our line trace, if we do hit the floor, essentially, we are just going to get the location, and at that location, we are just going to spawn actor. Oop, 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 spawn actor, where am I going with this? Oh, I'm off the wrong thing. Spawn actor from class, and with that, we are going to feed in our cube actor, and the transform, we just want it to be at that location that we hit. I don't really care that it's in the ground, it's not a big deal. So, this is just the simplest code we can write to spawn objects, but there's going to be an issue with this. And the first thing is that if we make this multiplayer, and we make it in a new window, so here's our server on the left, let's actually do the client on the left, and our server on the right. So as a server, I could walk up, click, and hey, we have a cube, right? But my client doesn't see it. And vice versa, if I spawn it on the client, the server doesn't see it. So the first thing that we would need to do is, I'm actually going to turn off physics on those cubes, but the first thing that we would need to do is we would need to replicate the, this cube existing. So now if we run this, I think on our server, when we click, there you go, we can see it on the server and on the client, but if we click on the client, you don't see it on the server. So this is just basic, we're still in the basic realms of multiplayer, in that the client just simply does not have the authority to spawn something onto the server. So to bridge this gap, what we would need to do is we would need to go back into our code, and we would need to do the basic thing that we do with multiplayer, and we need to make a custom event, and we need to call this, let's say, spawn cube server, and we would need to make one more event, and it's going to be spawn cube multi. So the multi, we are going to make it multicast. Let's just make it reliable. And the server, we're going to do run on server and make it reliable. And what we're going to do is we're going to move our spawn actor over to the multicast. So with that, then on server, we call the multi event, feed that in. And now when we click, we're just going to make this very simple on ourselves. And we're just going to call the spawn cube on server event, no matter who clicks to build. So this at first sight, will look correct. So when we start, if we run around as the server and we click, we can see it on both the server and on the client. And if we go with the client and we click, we see it on both the server and the client. But this isn't right. And the reason being is if we can articulate this, if we open up, let's see, if we can open up our cube, there we go. And if we go to our client, What's actually going to happen is actually let's restart this real quick and let's only do one cube. So on our client, what we're going to do is we're going to run up and we're going to click. So what this is actually going to look like, if we open up the cube now, yep, here we go. So if we look onto our listen server, there will only be one cube here. So our server thinks there's one cube, but our client thinks there's two cubes here. It's cube one and or cube like zero and cube one essentially. So the reason why this is happening is that when we're running this multicast to spawn the cube, we're spawning it on, well, this is essentially running twice. Once this is running on the server and the server is spawning the cube, and then this is running again on the client is spawning the cube. And since the server has the authority to spawn things for everybody, essentially the client is getting two cubes. So the way to maybe fix this is just to make it so that this only spawns on server. And while this oftentimes is the right answer for things, you're going to run into situations where things only need to be spawning onto the client. Actually, I think I screwed that up real quick. Let's see. 
or I think I have two projects open. Do I? What's going on here? One second. Let's hit stop. What's going on? No, we do only have one project. Okay, let's see what's... Oh, the transform wasn't copied over. There's the issue. So now, if we try this again, essentially, if we click on the server, we get one, and the client should also see it. And this should all be good and dandy. In theory, if we check our cube, the client... Oops, let's see. The server has one, and the client has one. So there we go. We have one on each. But you're going to run into, a, into certain situations when spawning things multiplayer where you don't want them to exactly be replicated because there can be some disconnect. I think bullets are a pretty good example. Say we say we, rep, we did the same exact code for spawning our bullets. As a player, when you clicked, it would send, a, send an event to the server, and on the server it would say, spawn a bullet, and this bullet is replicated and everybody sees it. If you have any type of latency in your game, that's going to be bad, right? Because as a player, when I click... Oops, let's actually hook up that shooting code real quick to actually visualize it. When I click as a player to shoot in a game, I want it to happen instantly. Imagine a multiplayer game where you click to shoot as a player, and you don't get that immediate feedback of a projectile coming out. What if, when we clicked here, it had to wait like 0.2 or 0.3 seconds for the communication to go to the server in the back, and then the bullet comes out? That wouldn't be very good. So how do you end up like alleviating that issue? Well one of the things you might need to do is you might not need to replicate actors or in what you actually might need to do is you might need to spawn multiple actors that aren't replicated but they kind of pretend to be replicated if that makes sense so that could be a, that could be a reason why you might need to do that but then there's even pitfalls with that so let's kind of show what that might look like so what I'm gonna do is inside the cube I'm not gonna replicate it and when we go to spawn a cube we're gonna spawn the cube like we did before where the client spawns it and the server spawns it so that's what we did there so now when we click, let's hook that back up, we're going to call this event to spawn the cube on server, and when we spawn, call this spawn on server, we're going to call it for everybody. So let's try that real quick. So what's going to end up happening is now, when we click, we should be able to spawn a cube there, and we should be able to spawn a cube here. They both see it, and if we check our debug, if we check the server, it has two cubes. If, if we check the client, it has two cubes. So in theory, that's working pretty good. But if we did this now with bullets, we would also run into an issue. The reason being is that you only want authority to happen in certain places. And what that means is that if we went into our cube and say we had some type of like overlap event on this cube, like say we had some type of like um, overlap bullet or something, like for, just for example, even pretend that this might be a bullet. Say this was like our overlap for the bullet. A lot of the times what you do in a multiplayer game is you use this event or this node called switch has authority and authority is the server remote is the client well when you spawn things on the client the client has authority so this instance where we didn't replicate the cube and we spawned it on both the client and the server the cube on the client is going to have authority that that cube is going to have authority on this node and that's an issue if you do that with bullets so one of the things I've done for one of my games is that I didn't replicate my bullets and essentially what I would do is instead of sending a call to the server instantly what I would do is I would do kind of spawning bullet locally like let's make a fake um, function right here and let's call spawn bullet local and what I would do is I wouldn't replicate my bullets I would spawn the bullet locally and then I would do a call to the server to spawn it and then the server would multicast it to all the other players to spawn bullets but then what I would do is I would create two variables. I would create one variable inside of the player called local player, just a boolean. One second, I have a cat issue. And that the other one I would call server. And I'll show you why we would make a server boolean. And essentially on begin play, if we have begin play somewhere, I think it's up above, let's see, there it is. So what I would do is on begin play of players, what I would do is I would check to see, um, is this actor, we would essentially just do, we would set local player, and we, we would set this equal to is we would get the local player pawn. And when you do get player pawn, that gets on the local machine. And I would just check, is that equal to self? So if you think about how multiplayer works, when we start the game, if we have two players in the server, there is actually going to be four players existent. There's going to be on the server, there's going to be the player in the server, and then on the client, there's going to be the client actor and the server actor. So essentially at the start of the actor, we're just seeing is this instance of the actor is that our local player and if so what would happen is that when we would call this multi-event 
I would do a branch and we would just check to see that if this is the local player, don't spawn this extra bullet or don't spawn this extra cube because we've already spawned it locally. So if we kind of run through this code on click, you would basically run your local spawning if you're not replicating the object and that you would then send the RPC out for the server and then the server would send it out to everybody and it would say, hey, everybody run this code right here. But we don't want to run this code on the client that has already spawned that 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 bullet or that actor, whatever it happens to be. So that's the reason why I would make this local player boolean. But then on top of that, if we pretended that this cube actor was a bullet, how do we then replicate authority? Because as I said before, if we're not replicating objects and we're spawning them on the client, that object has authority because it was spawned on the client. So what you essentially do is inside of the actor that's not being replicated but you're spawning through multiplayer is I would just do like has authority or has server or something like that. And with this, actually that's a bad one to do. I'll just call that server because <laughs> you can't do has authority because that already exists. And I would make it instance editable and expose on spawn. And then what you would do is that when you go to spawn this cube, what you're essentially feeding in is you're feeding in the server boolean that we have s stored in the player. And what we do with that is on begin play, we check for a big begin play of the actor we just do a switch has authority and if you have authority well we set server to be true so what would happen here is if this all makes sense that when we go to spawn we would spawn the bullet locally and we would run the same exact code and since it's the and say we did this on the client say the client clicks to spawn something what you would do is you would call the local spawning so the the local player would separately we could just like copy paste that inside the spawn local would spawn this and since he's not the server at the beginning of the game, we already checked to see if he was the server, and if he's not the server, if he was remote, we just say, no, we're not the server, so that inside of this cube, instead of doing a switch has authority, we do a branch and just say, are you the server? And that's kind of our way of doing our own authority check, is essentially what the purpose of that Boolean is, and that, say, if this is a bullet, if we're not the server, we don't want to be applying damage, we don't need to handle any type of events, we would just do a blood effect and then destroy the actor, and that above, if it was a server, that's where we would start applying damage, that's where we would make it affect the game, and then we would destroy the actor, but then, after we spawn the bullet locally, we also make that call to the server, so that that server can then tell everyone else in the game, hey, we need to spawn that bullet, we need to spawn whatever it happens to be in that since this gets ran on everybody for the player that this already spawned on because they're the one that actually did the clicking that's what this boolean check is here if you are not that local player then you spawn it so that if you are that local player we're not double spawning whatever it happens to be so with, through all of this rambling does that mean we shouldn't be replicating actors and that we should always be doing it like this no you have to find the situations where it makes sense and it doesn't make sense say you're building inside of a game say it's a multiplayer game and you're doing like construction you probably want only one instance of that actor existing and you just want it to be replicated and it just spawns on the server you want the server handling stuff like that but as i said with bullets it can be awkward to where if it only happens on the server and then it waits and then there's that delay where you click as a client and when you expect to see a bullet come out it comes out like 0.3 seconds later because of server delay so there's some situations where you don't want to replicate things that you need it to be spawned both locally and then on the server and then on all clients but they're not replicated but you're kind of faking replication so that's just some pitfalls so basically the two main pitfalls were that if you replicate an actor and inside of the class defaults if you use this replicates make sure that it's only being spawned on the server do not multicast spawning if you're replicating the actor and if you're not replicating the actor and you do end up doing some type of method where you're spawning it on all what you need to make sure you do is that you need to feed in some type of server boolean because of inside of this actor if you try to do an authority check it's not going to work because the client will have authority and that makes the whole purpose of finding authority redundant and useless. So those are the two pitfalls. I hope maybe some of that made sense. If you've ever started doing multiplayer code and maybe ran into some of these, I hope it clarifies it. If you haven't jumped in the server code or just making games multiplayer, then maybe this will make sense down the road for you. It's a tad complex, um, especially if you don't understand that all actors exist on all machines twice type of thing, um, then that's kind of an issue, but that's kind of the pitfalls of multiplayer code. I hope you've learned something, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.